Welcome to the first episode of our Mortborg series, everyone. This series, we sat down with Pele Nielsen, the writer of Mortborg, an apocalyptic dark fantasy RPG about dealing with the end of the world in a very heavy metal inspired setting. We are also joined the series by Agatha Chain, one of the hosts on the Asians Represent podcast, filling in for Amelia because, well, life. This episode, we learn about this game and begin creating our characters. But before we get into that, here's what to expect in the calls to action. After the show, uh, join me here for my initial thoughts on this game, our normal show closer stuff, uh, and some important Patreon information, as well as thank yous. But with all of that out of the way, enjoy the show, everybody. Welcome to Character Creation Cast, a show where we discuss and create characters, the best part of role-playing games, with guests using their favorite systems. I'm one of your hosts, Sryan, and this episode, my guest co-host, Agatha, and I are excited to welcome Pele Nielsen, writer for the game we are covering in this month's series, Morkborg, a pitch-black apocalyptic fantasy RPG about lost souls and fools seeking redemption, forgiveness, or the last remaining riches in a bleak and dying world. Welcome to Character Creation Cast. We're so glad you were able to join us today. Yeah, it's nice to be be on board. Really, really good. Thank you. So, Pele, could you tell us who you are along with your pronouns? What sort of things you do? Where people can find you online? Yeah, sure. I'm uh, Pele Nilsson, and uh, I'm one of a half of the creators of uh, Merkborg the role-playing game. I'm the writer of that game, uh, together with my friend Johan Noor, which is the illustrator and ha had done all the layout and, and so on. So that's me. I live in Stockholm, in, uh, in Sweden. And uh, uh, as of now, uh, uh, writing uh, uh, is one of my two jobs. I have another day job. <laughs> Uh, as well, nice. uh, for safety's sake, because uh, yeah, I have a family and uh, the life of a writer, right? Yeah, so uh, <laughs> it's still a hobby for me, even though I think I could work with this if I wanted to. But it's good to have it on a hobby level, I think. Right now, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and I forgot to I forgot to answer two other questions. Uh, the, my, uh, my pronouns is uh, he him, and uh, it's he, the most. Uh, I'm around at our Discord, the Merkborg Discord channel, and uh, the uh, Facebook group uh, Talk uh, Talk Merkborg. It's called. So that's the easiest way to find me. All right. Yeah. And uh, Agatha, I know it's been a while since we've had you on as a guest. I believe it was like series 16 or something like that. Yeah. Uh, could you go ahead and remind folks of who you are, your pronouns, and where else folks might know you from? Yeah, of course. Uh, so, yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Agatha. My pronouns are she, her. Uh, and I'm one of the co-hosts of the Asians Represent podcast, which is also part of the One Shot Network. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I've been writing for various games like Deathmatch Island, Odd Jobs, which is the book of RPG micro settings, and also consult on games. And the most recent one being Tomb Raider. Uh, and you can find me online at Mighty Shrimp with two Ys um, on ish.io and Twitter. Very cool. All right, well, let's go ahead and get into this. And we'll start by discussing what this game is all about. What's in a game? Okay, Pele, what is the core concept of Morkborg? Uh, the core concept is to have a fun time together uh, in a very dark setting where 
the world is mm. going to end. So it's uh, it's kind of bleak. Uh, lots of <laughs> uh, blood and gore and and so on. But uh, yeah. it's also tongue in cheek. Lots of humor in the in the setting as well. So that's very important to mention. So yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. I mean, it sounds like a very metal game. <laughs> yeah, it's as, so as metal, say, right? <laughs> yeah, it's very inspired by. Uh, we talk more about that later, I guess. But uh, it's very inspired by music. Uh, this mm. uh, this uh, role playing game more than uh, that makes a lot of sense. More than other role playing games. So uh, it's yeah, movies and music is very important influences for this game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I saw that giant list of uh, musical inspirations. Yes, it's very important to, to have that, <laughs> have that uh, mm-hmm. list of band in the, uh, on the credits page. Yeah. Nice. So, yeah. so setting is, the setting is super um, strong in this game. And what kind of setting would you say that you, you're playing in? When you play this game, yeah, it's it's super strong and it's super short. <laughs> that that was a very important design goal to to not have this uh, like uh, two hundred page of uh, setting and lots of uh, mm-hmm. yeah uh, lore. Uh, so yeah, uh, for for me, it was important to have uh, various kind of locations in the setting. It kind of wrote itself because in my head, I wanted to have this uh, Bathory uh, vampire place. So that's up in the icy north. And I wanted a Baroque king in the south. And uh, I wanted a forest, uh, a Mm -hmm. dark forest and uh, some uh, temple ruin place out on an island. Uh, So yeah, it was... The, the setting was quite an easy uh, thing to write, actually. It it was mm-hmm. all uh, in my head uh, from the start. Very I should nice. mention that uh, uh, we didn't plan to include the setting when we started out this project. So the setting was uh, one of the last things that we did for the book, actually. Oh, interesting. So, yeah. Huh. Yeah, that's very cool. So then what tools do we need to actually play the game when we get into it? You need a core book uh, for Mark Borg. Uh, uh, this one, the core book. And uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, if you don't want to buy it, there's a free PDF on our website, markborg.com, uh, where you can download like a bare bones edition of it without illustrations and Stuff like that. Oh, nice. Lots of people, uh, some people uh, don't enjoy uh, all of the messed up <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> the way it looks. Uh, so, but you can download the core rules there, and you need the polyhedral dice, so like from D4 to D20. You need those mm-hmm. common dice and a character sheet. and pencils and a few friends to play with mm-hmm. that's all you need awesome yeah yeah ideally you'll have friends <laughs> yeah <laughs> to be able to play with yeah that's uh, it's uh, kind of hard to find a group to play with nowadays so yeah there's a lot of online gaming going on in the for Merkborg as well mm-hmm. yeah that's yeah. true yeah so uh let's talk about uh, the kind of stories and themes that this game explores. You mentioned a little bit before that it's like bleak, but also has a sense of humor. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, uh, it explores the, uh, it, the book and setting also is, uh, it's like a countdown and you can choose what kind of, yeah, tempo you want to, and mm-hmm. the world with it. so uh, there's a, a system for that as well but uh, yeah uh, the world is going to end sooner or later uh, that, that, and, so that's so it's not just a buzzword to use apocalyptic 
fantasy. Uh, it, no. it is actually the end of the world in this game. Yeah, it, yeah, it is. And of course, oh, you can you, you can let the world uh, go on for a couple of years if you want, but it can also end in a couple of weeks. It, yeah. it depends. There's a system for that in the in the core book. And you are oh, nice. miserable uh, characters living in this world, yeah. <laughs> uh, trying to survive the last days uh, in a yeah fantasy, yeah. dark fantasy world. It, it's a bit like the movie Army of Darkness, if you have seen that. Um, the oh, yeah. Yeah. The characters is like that, a bit, uh, you know, uh, clumsy and uh, stupid and... Uh, uh, <laughs> anti-heroes more, yeah a little over the top at times yeah. that makes sense yeah so so what do we do as uh as characters in this game like what what are our goals uh, are we trying to stop the apocalypse or just postpone it or or are we just resolved to our fate and trying to make the best of it before everything happens yeah, the answer is yes on that question. Uh, you, you can you can uh, play it how, however you want. Uh, it's it's uh, it's very open for for all you, the things you mentioned. You can try mm. to stop the end of the world if you want. That could be a really fun approach to. Is to it play possible the game. to stop? the end of the world or is uh, it inevitable that's, that's not clear it's uh oh. it's 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 up to you to the gm and your <laughs> your playing group if that's possible it might be possible who knows nice. but we uh wow. we we don't tell the the uh, the players and the, and the group uh how it's supposed to be uh okay. so uh, th that's one approach or you can just have a fun time accepting that well, there's nothing to do. The world is gonna end sooner or later, so you can mm -hmm. approach it in in various uh, di directions, so to speak. Very nice. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And so, what would you say is unique uh, about Merkbor specifically? Like, uh, also, what sparked the desire to create this game? Uh. From the beginning, uh, what sparked the desire to create the game was that it was kind of hard to find uh, a game that you were able to create characters in like 10 minutes and understand the rules in 10 minutes as well. Mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, uh, in the back pages of the book, there's uh, one page that... Uh, uh describe all the rules you need to know to get going so that was uh one approach that is a little bit unique there are some few other games that are a bit like that like uh, uh maybe into the odd that role-playing game or the mm -hmm. black hack mm -hmm. and, and so on there you, it's a a little bit the same there, you, where you can create characters and get going quite fast. Uh, so we wanted to create that kind of game that you can, uh, uh, where you don't have, uh, bog down with the rules and stuff like that, and, and it can start playing right away. And the other thing that might be unique that I haven't seen too much is that it's that combination that we talked about with uh, a very bleak and dark world uh, without getting edge lordy and uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, with tongue in cheek mm -hmm. and and, uh, and lots of humor uh, as well. So that's the thing I think about when I, what makes this game stand out. And of course, the, the design and the look of the book as well. I mean, Every Touch spread is looking uh, uh, totally different, and I think with used like uh, what do you call it uh, typefaces. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. It's I think it's like two, one hundred and ten to five different uh, typefaces <laughs> in the book. So oh, wow. uh, that was. Uh, I mean, Johan is he was working in commercial commercials when he he was working with this book, and there's then there are lots of rules, and you. You need to do it this way and that way. 
and he wanted mm-hmm. to break everything there. So that's also one thing that I think uh, appealed to a lot of people. Uh, yeah, the art punk <laughs> kind of uh, look yeah. of a book. Looking well. at it, yeah, yeah. Looking at it is looking at a piece of art. Like every page is like, whoa. Yeah, and it's like like very very visceral and like uh like like the art really kind of makes you anxious as well. Like like it's it's there's it's and 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 that whole like metal like m- musical aspect like is like you could put any of this on an album cover for for like a metal band and yeah. it would fit perfectly. Yeah. That's right. And we did a metal album as well for <laughs> for this oh. game so <laughs> with an event campaign. That's uh, awesome. So that that's was kind of, kind of fun as well. So we did, we when we thought about not including an index because uh, every spread is like I said so unique. So we thought yeah. maybe we don't need an index for this book because on the page with the heart there's hit points <laughs> uh, discussing hit points and and so on but uh, yeah in the in in the end we included the the index mm-hmm. as well yeah i think that was a good choice yeah <laughs> it's yes. helpful for me yeah yeah yep. it, we, we we only thought about it for a day or so so yeah mm-hmm. very cool well, this game uh, came out in February of 2020, uh, yeah. but when did you actually start developing the game? We started to develop the game in the summer of 2018. And uh, okay. uh, I started out with only a paper, front and back, with uh, the core rules, some few monsters, and uh, yeah, equipment and stuff like that. Okay. And then, then I started to talk with you on, and it developed further and further, and we contacted a, a publisher as well, Free League Publishing, mm-hmm. if they were interested in publishing this book. So yeah, yeah. We, uh, we had a Kickstarter in the spring of 2019, so that was about seven months later, or eight months later, or something like that. That's and then we, the, the book was like seventy-five uh, percent done, mm-hmm. so we we were done in the summer of two thousand nineteen. So it took about uh-huh. one year to finish the book. That's very cool. Yeah, the backer the the there was a Kickstarter, and the, the backers got the book in November two thousand nineteen, yeah. and then it was released, like you mentioned in early uh, 2020 yeah. very cool yeah no free league is is an amazing like match for this like f- theme of this game because they've got a lot of that sort of dark fantasy uh in their repertoire that would be uh you know work re- really well right alongside this this sort of thing so that, that's uh that's a really good pair in there yeah and you and had been working with free league publishing before oh. this book as well he he did the layout on the like the Simbarum role playing game if you played oh, that oh yeah, that's yeah. Also I a, have a, loved that game yeah it's a, a beautiful book and so yeah he was working Very with cool. that as well and, that's awesome uh, did some other few things for them so he, he knew the guys uh, that that's nice yeah very cool so are there any basic terms or concepts that we might need to know before we start character creation? Um, I don't think so. It's it's quite uh, common uh, words. It's like abilities okay. and equipment yeah, and stuff like that. So it's nothing, yeah. nothing odd. Seems like stuff that we could easily go over during character creation, right? Yeah. yeah. The, the only thing awesome. I can think of is omens, but that's like... Uh, luck points in the game. Oh, okay. You get some moments so that you can re-roll uh, and Very do cool. maximal damage and stuff like that. So Very uh, nice. Okay. Otherwise, it's nothing nothing strange. Right. 
Do we need any dice for character creation? Yeah, uh, uh, you need uh, three d6s to roll your okay. abilities. Uh, then oh. there are some, uh, or actually you need some, maybe all of the dice <laughs> if you're uh, d4 <laughs> to d20, because you, you roll your equipment and your oh, abilities, okay. and then there are some fun uh, optional rules to kind of uh, make your character more interesting. Uh, oh, amazing. It, there's some optional flaws and stuff like that but we'll go over that and then you then you use a d20 so and but i think oh, nice. you, you need to roll your armor and stuff like that and then you need a d4 so i think you should bring all of the dice uh, perfect actually in okay. character creation yeah it should be fine um yeah. i've got three sets of dice in front of me and a lot more right behind me if i need it so <laughs> i should yeah. be good now okay uh well are we are we ready to make some people? Yeah. All right, let's let's make some people. Yeah. Let's make some people. Um so Pele, what do we need to do first to start making our characters? The first thing is besides uh if you want to randomize a name for your character, but that's the first thing you can do is that uh, mm. the the book has uh, the rules has uh, an option where you can create uh, a classless character mm. or you can pick uh, one of the six classes that are optional in the book and most people oh, think it's more fun to have classes so maybe we do that but so the first one so what what are the, yeah what are the classes that uh the book provides for us yeah uh, i can check them up here in order and you can randomize sure. which class you get uh you can roll a d d6 if you want to randomize it mm -hmm. or you can pick a class but i think it's more fun to randomize uh what class you get so the first uh -huh. one is uh, a fanged deserter. That is kind of a with big teeth, uh, um, you know, a, a soldier, a deserted soldier <laughs> from the armies uh, yeah. of, of darkness. A kind of a fighter kind of class in this game. So it's it, that's that's the first class. Uh, the, I love the, the uh, I the love the flavor on that. Yeah. Uh, you have 30 or so friends who never let you down your teeth. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. Amazing. You can always trust your teeth. Mm -hmm. uh, the second class is the Gutterborn slump, uh, Scum. Um, so that's kind of a thief class in Merkborg. But okay. Yeah. Uh, the, the third class is the esoteric hermit uh, that has uh, it's yeah it, it's more or less as it said it's uh, it's a wise class uh, a, a very a bit strange class and, uh, mm -hmm. so that's the third class the, the fourth class is a wretched royalty so that's you mm -hmm. have royal blood going running through your veins but some uh, because of some reason you are ousted from that kind of world now and are a miserable character <laughs> living in the world of mark borg uh, the, the fifth class it, it's like if you compare to uh, standard games or other games it's like the cleric and it's called heretical mm -hmm. priest so that's a fifth class and the sixth okay. class is the occult herb monster. So mm -hmm. you are very good at, uh, yeah, mixing drugs and herbs and stuff like that and, uh, heal people and, uh, and so on and have a connection with the occult and so on. So that's the sixth standard class. There are lots of more okay. classes, uh, which you can choose from out on the internet, but, uh, mm -hmm. um, like 
like uh, 50 more classes, but these are the standard classes in the book. Wow. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, you did mention you can you can just there's rules for creating your own class. Is it a bunch of random tables as well to do that? Yeah, the uh, the difference is that uh, uh, you don't you you roll uh, when you roll your abilities. Yeah, you can pick two abilities where you can, where you roll four d sixes and pick the three best. Uh, results oh, okay. when you create your character that's the bonus they get mm -hmm. if you play classless and then you sense. randomize on the you use the same tables as the classes after that right. when you create your character that makes so sense the, yeah but you need to flesh it out a bit yeah for, by yourself so yeah. that right. makes sense yeah, yeah. It's okay. fun to play that was on one as well, but uh, yeah, normally uh, like ninety percent of everyone want to play class, right? Yeah, yeah, because they're given really good names. They are really good. They are really <laughs> yeah, I guess good. I can roll a random character, or I can be a gutter born scum. Like, you yeah, know? Yeah. <laughs> that's right. But I think it would be most fun to randomize which class we get. So. We randomize okay. everything, I think. Okay. I will roll. So, but, but I, the first one we can do is uh, to uh, roll the name of your character. Oh. It could be fun to do first. Yeah. That's uh, on the first page of the book. We have like, uh, you roll a d6 to check what table you should use. And then you roll a d8. Oh, okay. To, to uh, get your name. There it is. Yeah. Let's see what we get. Yeah. I roll a five on my d6 and a five on my d8. I got a two yeah, and then an eight. I rolled a four on my d6 and then a six on my d8. So I am Noggle. 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 And I got Hargha. Hargha? Yeah. H-A-R-G-H-A. And I got five and five, so that's uh, Teras. Nice. Nagel, such a good name. Yeah, these, yeah. Are, these are very good. Yeah. Uh, Nagel is actually, I'm not sure what it's called in English, I forgot the name, but the, the top on, on the top of the finger, mm. the one you cut with a scissor when it grows long, uh, nail. nail. Oh, the nail. Ah. Yep, yeah. the nail, yep. Okay. Yeah, so, <laughs> so, so uh, mm. Nagel is, uh, is that in... Uh, it's Swedish. Mm. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Oh, well, I guess uh, I need to feature my nails in some kind of yeah. thing. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, and the class you roll determines how you roll your abilities. Okay. Uh, so you can, you can get some minus or plus depending on which class you roll. So, and it also tells you if you have to use another dice when you randomize your equipment. So like if you get a Garabor Scum, uh, you, you roll uh, other dice compared to another class when you roll your equipment. And so, yeah. I think the second thing to do is uh, roll the class and that's done with a D6 then. If we... Okay. Is it is it relatively quick to do classless? Because I am yeah. very intrigued by that. Yeah, Ryan is <laughs> is yeah. really looking it. at the classless option. I I would love yeah. to do classless if I could uh, to showcase at least how that's done. I think that would be really good for the show as well. Yeah, you can uh, do the classless. Awesome uh, character. Uh, I I do a a class. Okay, and uh, it doesn't matter if one or. Some of the players are classless, and the other one has a class. It's 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 a you don't have to choose for as a group how you mm -hmm. want to play it. So it's they can play together. Absolutely, it's balanced either way. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah more or less balanced. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> it, it it it's uh, I, I got I rolled a four. So for me, uh, I am a wretched uh, royalty. Nice. So I. Uh, Note that down. All right, Agatha, what did you get? 
Do, do you want to have a class as well? Or? Yeah, I'll, I'll go with a yeah. class. Uh, I rolled yeah. and I have to say I did not fudge my roll, but I did get gutterborn scum. I think yeah, I nice was fun. meant to be. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, that's great. All right. And what do, do I have to do anything uh, aside from declaring that I want to be classless at this point? Uh, no, not at this point. Awesome. And now we're at the same page. Perfect. Uh, the second thing we should do before, we, we can uh, check how much silver we get. That's uh, the, the, the money in Merkborg. Sure. And then... Uh, how many omens we get, you know, the, the luck points or so to speak, uh, which I talked about earlier and also hit points. Okay. But, uh, oh, now that I think about it, you need to know your toughness. That's oh, yeah. one of the four abilities before you, you can, you, uh, get your hit points. So I think we should start with the abilities actually sure. before okay. we do that. So, uh, should we start with the classless first? Sure. Yeah. And then you should, uh, you can pick, uh, there, there are four abilities. Yes. It's like strength, agility, presence, and toughness in this game. So you pick two abilities that you want to roll 4d6s sure. and you drop the lowest result okay. on these two abilities. So I yeah. was, I was thinking, uh, agility and presence would be even better, uh, at, uh yeah. abilities. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna go ahead and roll those right away. Uh, one of them fell on the ground. So I'm gonna count that as a reroll. All right, that's not too bad. Uh, that's a 14 for my agility. That's really good. Yeah. Yeah, plus one. Okay. But uh, uh, you you don't need to uh, to write down 14 on your character sheet. Oh. Okay. Because you get a, a modifier. And that's the only thing you use. Oh, so we write down the, the plus so, one in there, So right? 14, the 14 is plus one. So you have Perfect. plus one in uh, agility. Okay. And, and then there's presence. a table for this. Yep. That makes sense. This one's not as good. Uh, this one's only 10. But that's like right in the middle, so that's not bad. 10 is uh, no modifier, so you have zero in... In that one. Yeah. So that's my presence. And then I just roll 3d6 for strength and toughness, right? Yeah. Um, That's 15 for my oh, strength. Good. That puts me at a plus that's, two. Uh, that's, uh, you, you get plus two. Wow. If you have 15 or 16, it's plus two. Okay. Get that ability. Yeah. And then this one was 12. Which is that's uh, plus zero, for zero as well. Okay, that's not too bad. That's an interesting spread. Yeah, not no minus at least. Yeah, so that's good. Yeah, and should we uh, we go to the Gatherborn Slam? Uh, Heck yeah! So you can let's go. Yeah, so you create your the Gatherborn Slam has uh, when you roll your strength, uh, you roll three d six minus two. Oh. Because I'm small. For, That's true. Yeah. <laughs> so. Okay. 3d6 minus 2. <sighs> okay. Well, I rolled very well. Uh, mm. oh, se 17 minus 2. 17. Wow. Oh, no. 15. Minus 2. So it's 15. So that's 15. Yeah. For strength. Yeah. And 15 is uh, plus 2. <gasps> that's I wild. Very strong. <laughs> You are I a be strong, scum, but I'm strong. scum, yeah. Yeah. And the other abilities, uh, you're all normal with 3d6. Okay. Uh, the agility, presence, and toughness. Okay. Okay, I have uh, 10 in agility, so that's a zero, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, my presence is nine. Is that Still also plus zero? zero. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's zero. Uh, Lucky between nine and twelve. Okay, is uh, zero. Yeah, and then toughness is thirteen. Mm -hmm. And you get plus one. Plus one, strong and tough. <laughs> yeah, 
and I check my abilities and I was a wretch royalty and I'm very painfully average as it says so I roll 3d6 on all my rolls okay uh, I should mention that the Gadabon uh, scum and you can note that on your character sheet as well is when you uh, do presence and agility tests a normal test you roll a d20 and add your modifier and for a normal test you want to hit 12 or more but uh, when you use these two abilities uh, you reduce that with two so a normal test would be 10 instead so that's very good Mm -hmm. yeah is presence like how intimidated Uh, if if it's Others yeah, are uh, no, yeah. It's it's like that. Into do that, and if you are uh, like perception, oh, you use uh, presence okay. for perception, and also, uh, and that was a design goal was to include all the abilities when it comes to combat. So uh, you, when you have uh, range combat, you use your presence skill. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. Strength is for melee, and uh, agility is when you defend yourself. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. So, uh, so you use all of those three abilities okay. uh, in combat. So, and then toughness is like how hardy you are. With- uh, yeah, toughness is like uh, if you if you uh, drink poison or uh, get an infection, that mm-hmm. is very good to have, and uh, the toughness will also modify. Uh, when we roll for hit points uh, okay. in just a minute, uh, right. you add your uh, toughness modification as well. So that's very good to have. Mm-hmm. Uh, my strength is uh, five. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've got a- that's uh, that's that's uh, minus two. Okay. Whoa. In strength. Well, at least we got some minuses yeah. somewhere, right? Yeah. <laughs> And my agility is not that good either. It's nine, so zero. My presence is 12, so that's a zero as well. Okay. So let's hope for a high roll now. Absolutely. 15. Oh, very nice. Very nice. (laughs) So that's uh, plus two. Nice. Okay. Okay. So nice. We We got a decent array between us, right? Yeah. I also see that. I have some other things like I have for the gutterborn scum. I can roll a d6 for my bad birth, my backstory. So I did. You jumping ahead, Agatha? <laughs> Call to watch action. Yeah, like that. I am so glad we finally got a chance to to cover Morkborg. I, I was. Uh, very sad that Amelia was not able to join us for this series because this game is right up her alley. Uh, but with being sick, with uh, the the Annie's wrapping up, uh, she is extraordinarily busy and and trying to recover from being sick. And uh, thankfully, at this at the, the time of this recording, uh, she is doing well. So uh, hopefully, we can get her on uh, for an, one of these other cold opens uh, sometime later this month. But I do hope that you are enjoying the series so far. Uh, we get into uh, some phenomenal details in the next episode for our characters. Um, there are probably some content warnings uh, for the next episode about uh, some gross stuff that we talk about. So uh, this game goes extra hard in a lot of ways, and uh, it's it's really, really good. But uh, there's there's a lot of squeamish sort of stuff that we try to dance around a little bit uh so hopefully we're very successful on that it's uh uh something to look forward to for sure but before we let you go for the day we do have some calls to action if you like what we're doing here and you want to support the show uh please head on over to our patreon at patreon.com slash character creation cast 
and sign up for any of our basic tiers as a free trial. Uh, each level has a ton of great rewards associated with it. We've tried really hard to get some good value in each of our levels. Uh, for instance, our, our $10 level and up has a sticker of the month club where you get a, a free sticker every single month, uh, as well as uh, all the other stuff from the lower level. So like on their $5 level, you can get some custom C3 dice and a personalized thank you card uh, written and designed and put together by Amelia herself. Uh, and uh, for $1 and up, you can get access to our weekly chit chats uh every time we're able to do them once uh things settle down in life uh we will do those a lot more regularly but most importantly right now we are currently under our operating budget for the year um so any assistance that you can provide would be greatly appreciated we would love to see some new patrons joining up we also like to thank our patrons personally every episode and in the spirit of keeping things shorter uh, we are grouping things by three now uh, so let's go ahead and get started thank you djg aka tigranosaurus eric bounce and daryl holiday second we couldn't do this without you shadim cabal the shyest barbarian and benjamin sweeney thanks for your continued support thank you lorcan mckinnis rob fletcher and kevin brown we couldn't do this without you as well tentacle duck john adamus and david chadwick we are so grateful to you thank you Cole McCallum, Carlos Salazar, and Eric S. Thanks. Ian Potmeyer, Sorry Goth, and Liam G. Our deepest thanks to you as well. We appreciate your support, Brian Colm, Garden GM, and Tinglefoot. Thank you. Blue Kryptonite, Danny, and Nicole Trainer. Our deepest thanks to you as well. Thanks, Liam Murray, Kenning, and Brian Kurtz. So glad to have you back in us. And Mark E. Fair and Drew Owen, you're the best. Thank you. And thank you to all of our future patrons. Your support is helping keep the lights on for the show. Every little bit here helps tremendously, and we are incredibly grateful to all of you. If you are already supporting the Patreon or can't afford to do so right now and still want to show your support for the show, the next best way to do so is to leave a review on Apple Podcasts, Podchaser, Podcast Addict, or even Facebook, or just spread the word around about the show to your friends. We'll read your review right here and thank you personally the episode after we get the review. So if you get it in now, uh, it's going to be right at the top of the list. So we'd love to read it. That's all we have for today's episode. Next week, we'll conclude the character creation portion of the series with our guests. But until then, take care, everyone. Stay safe, drink some water, and keep making those amazing people. We'll see you next time. Thank you for joining us for part one of this character creation series. We'll be back in part two, picking up right where we left off. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter and Blue Sky at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter and Blue Sky at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter and Blue Sky at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can also be found in the show notes. If you'd like to support our show, find us on Patreon. Get access to bonus episodes, exclusive merch, and much more at patreon.com slash character creation cast. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.